Welcome back to a little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to be looking at the finer position family of functions, um, which have quite a few options. The simple case, thankfully, is nice and simple. So let's uh, go and try and find something in this array we've got defined over here. This is a vector. Remember that a vector is a one-dimensional array. Um, let's try and find 30 in this array. Naturally, we, it finds it and it returns that value. Um, then we can say, I don't know, let's find uh, 40, which isn't in the array, and it returns nil. So, so far, what we'd expect. And it works very similarly if you want to go and look up in this other list. Uh, we can search for 1, which it finds. We can search for A. Uh, we quote this, so we're not treating this as a variable. We're treating this as a symbol. Um, so it finds the symbol A right here. Um, we can't search for this list exactly, with, like, and I'll get into why in this way yet, but uh, we will get, we will do that very soon. Sorry, I mumbled on my words there, but we're going to get to how to do that. Um, so we have lists and arrays, and we can search over them. Find um, works over sequences, and two common subtypes of a sequence are array, uh, vectors and lists. That's why I'm choosing to use these here. Um, but like I said, we can pass a lot of arguments to um, to find. So let's, for example, um, pass in how we're going to uh, compare. And the way we do this um, is we pass in, we say test. Because if we look down the mini buffer down here, we can see and key, which means all of these are keyword arguments. And this is the default value of a start, which we'll get to soon. And there's this test one down here. Test allows us to pass in a function that will be used for comparison. Um, so here we're going to compare 20 with 10, and then with 20, and then with 30 using this function. Um, and if it finds the result, it's going to return it. Now, note that this is no, no longer going to work with our little list. Um, and not because 20 isn't in here, because equals is a function for comparing numbers. And now, let me just bring this code back and bump this up. We've got lots of different things in here. We have numbers, 1 and 4. We also have a symbol A, and we have a list containing a string that says jam. So what happened was it compared 20 and this number, went, nope, that's not 20. So it got to here, and then it tried to compare 20 and the symbol A using this function. And it, obviously it freaked out and said, whoa, symbol A is not a number. So that was the end of that. So you want to uh, pick the appropriate um, test function. And we've gone over some of these before in other videos. So you might want to pass in equal, which allow you to compare uh, symbols and um, sorry, symbols and numbers. Um, or in this case, since we're comparing lots of these different types, we probably just use equal. We can see that we did not find uh, 20 in this list. But now we can search for the list containing jam, and we do find it. What was important here um, was that now we're using this equal um, function, we can reliably say that it's going to check the structure of this. Uh, by default, it's going to use EQL, um, which is going to which works on um, numbers and on symbols and things like this because it's going to look for. It's either going to compare the numbers numerically or it's going to look to see that they are the same object in memory. So it would check to see if this literal here is exactly the same list in memory as this one here, which, depending on your implementation, may or may not be true, but that isn't necessarily what you want to search for. There's also test not, um, which is going to find anything that is not equal to this thing. So we see it's going to return this element right here because it's finding, hey, this this isn't a list that contains jam, so it returns it. Uh, if we change this again and we made it 1, then it's going to return A because it compared this first and said, oh, 1 is equal to 1. Fair enough. So that's not appropriate because we're doing test not. And then it compares A to 1 using equal, which returns nil, which is great because nil is the answer we're looking for. We're testing that it's not equal. So then it returns that as the result. Um, let's get away from this for a second. We'll get back to our A0 array. Um, we can 
specify where we want to start searching from. So actually, let's check for 10. And we can see that obviously it's, it's there. We can find 10 in this array. Uh, but we could also say we're going to start searching from index 1. Remember, zero-based indexing. This is element 0. This is element 1. So now it's not going to find it because it's searching from here going forward. You can use start and end to put caps on um, where you're searching. Um, start and end always work from the beginning of the array. They're kind of defining a region. So let's let's say this is our array here. Start is going to set where we start searching from. This is a start. And then end is going to specify where we stop searching. So we're going to find in between those two things. And that is true even if you use this next one. Let me just bring it up. There is an argument that says from end. And if you give it true, it's going to search backwards through the array. However, start and end still are, um, are specified in terms of the front of the array. So it's going to scan backwards between these two points. It's just an easy thing to get caught out on. I did just a couple of minutes ago, so it's worth noting. Now, that's all very well and good. Um, but yeah, this is really just a way of finding if something is in there or not. Uh, what we also have is find if. And find if is kind of nice because it means we can pass in a function. The first argument is a function um, that we can use to specify if something matches or not. So it's going to look through a0 to find anything which matches this function. So it's going to pass one value to this function and this is going to return true or false. Now the odd p function, I should just show you if you haven't seen it before, uh, returns true if something's odd and it returns nil if it's false. It's, if it's even. Ah. Um, so yes, we're going to look for any odd thing <laughs> in this array and of course we get nothing because all of these guys are even but if we pass it to our l1 variable list rather we can see that it returns one one when passed to the odd p function is going to return true so it's like oh great we'll return that as you can imagine find if not is going to do the opposite of this whoops Ah, here's a problem I didn't actually notice when I was thinking about this example. Um, what happened there? We got an error um, saying that the symbol A is not a number because what it was doing is it was going, okay, I'm going to find something that is not odd. Well, it looks at this and goes, okay, that's definitely an odd number, so we can carry on. So it goes to this. And it tries to find out if this is an odd number, which makes no sense because it's not a number, it's a symbol. Sorry, it tries to find out if it's odd, uh, which only makes sense for numbers. And this isn't a number, so it freaks out and dies. Um, let's search for find if not odd in our A0 array. And we can see that it returns 10 because 10 isn't odd. Let's get back to find if again because it's kind of handy. Um, you can also see in here um, that you can specify start and end. Two very handy functions, just like we saw before. We can also specify key, which you could do in find too. Um, and I'm going to show you what that does. But to do this, I think we're going to need another little array. So let's go and get L2 up here. Um, and we're going to do, let's have a look. So we'll do 0, jam, 1, and to beef. Right, let's just make sure that I hadn't got something defined for that already. Okay, so there's our array. Now I want to find um, the pair where the number is odd, where this first element, um, this first element of the sublist is odd. Now we can't use find if odd on this. We'll see why very quickly. It's going to crash and say, hey. This first thing isn't an integer, so trying to find out if it's odd or not makes no sense. So I'm going to abort that. What we need to do is tell it how to look inside the elements. And we do that with key. 
we pass it a function that is going to get a value. So, so what happens is this whole thing, this whole element is going to get passed to this key function. And then whatever is returned from that is what is going to be passed to odd p. And so when we do this, we can find that it found this sublist here. So the first thing got passed in. It got passed to first. And first returns the first element of a list, which is zero. Zero got passed to odd p. Odd p returned false. So we haven't found it yet. So we pass in this element, which gets passed to first, which gets one, which gets passed to odd p. One is odd, so it returns this whole thing here. So, and these don't have to be lists, of course. These could be structs, or these could be like objects, instance of classes, and things like this. So it could be, yeah, some big chunk of JSON data that you deserialize, or whatever it is. Um, it means these functions are nice and reusable because you can just pass in the function that gets the value you're interested in, key, and the test that you want to run on that value, which is the predicate in this case. Of course, find also works um, like this. So if you wanted to find two in L2, that seems to make no sense on its own uh, because none of these are the number two, but we're interested in this first element here. So again, you can use key or we'll use first, and you can see that we found this one here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, of course, we haven't looked at these position functions yet. And the reason we haven't is they're incredibly similar. Because all they do is instead of returning the element, they're going to return the index of the element. So let's take find here and switch out with position. And it's going to return back 2, which is, this, uh, which is the, the index. So 0, 1, 2. Um, if we pass in, let's do... Uh, find if list p, which is a function that returns true if the element is a list, we pass in l1, and it returns this element here because it's the first thing that it finds that is a list. Let's change this to position if, and then it tells us its element at index 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's pretty much it. I don't think I've... Have I forgotten anything? Let's have a look. No, we've done start, we've done from end, um, we've done end, we've done key, and we've looked at position if and uh, find if. So I think that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Let me find this stop button.